look This the black holocaust I knew it was prophecy A thousand times worse than the Jewish atrocities Uneven playing field, there'll never be a fair score Cause in 1619, that's when they declared war We the 12 tribes, the ones that the promise reaches Alright, first and foremost, I want to say Kal Hala, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai That's all praises to the Most High God In the name of His only Son, Yahweh Shai Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ we're the Hebrew Israelites of the San Francisco Sicarii are here to preach the downfall of Babylon and bring back the black, Hispanic, and Native American to their true nationality, which is the Israelites of the Bible. Right. right and today I'm going to be going into the laws not done away with and showing you exactly what Jesus, right, exactly what Yahweh Shai fulfilled. Book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things, hold fast to which is good. It says prove all things right because what the church likes to say is that Jesus did away with the law right and I'm here to show you that he did it and I'm gonna give you precept after precept showing you exactly what he fulfilled right Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets I am not come to destroy it but to fulfill all right what's going on sister how you doing Anybody want to how you doing it's cool okay. Yeah. You believe in God? You believe in the Bible? Right? Do you know who you descend from in the Bible? Who you descend from in the Bible? Yeah, what nation of people? Yeah, because everybody comes from somebody in the Bible then, right? So who would you descend from? That's a nation? That's right. Uh -huh. Okay, give me that in uh, Romans. Okay, Nick, uh, Nicole, I'm gonna just first I'm gonna establish what nation you come from. Right? What is your father? Yes. He's Arab. Where, where exactly is your dad from? He's an Arab. And he's not a descendant of the, of the slaves of here in America, right? And you don't know what your grandpa is from your dad's side? But an Arab though. Okay, and I'm going to show you why that, why that matters, right? Give me that in numbers. Because according to the Bible, right, you are who your father is. That's right. Right? And if you're a black, Hispanic, and Native American, here in the Americas, you're considered Israel. According to the Bible, it's Israel. You're an Israelite. Right? An Arab, though, is not an Israelite. Right. Okay, here, I'm going to show you this in Numbers real quick. Book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. Right, they declared their pedigree, right? Their breed, the, the race that they are, right? So just finish that off. Yeah, uh, from, the, from 20 years old and up, upward by the pole. So that's just to establish who you, who you are, right? According to the Bible. And you said that all you had to do was believe in Jesus, right? And that, that's John 3, 16, right? I'm, okay, we'll go into that. Just bring, get John 3, 16. Okay. Let me let me just establish your verse, right? Yeah, of course, of course. The uh, book of John, chapter three, verse sixteen: For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So okay, so how we how I had said earlier, right, is that. You would not be considered Israel, right? Because your fa your forefathers are Arabs, right? That's considered an Ishmaelite, right? And you're saying according to that verse, that salvation pertains to you as well, right? Okay. 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 Right. Okay. So you're saying because it says God so loved the world, 
right? That that pertains to everybody. No, no, I'm not saying that it pertains to everybody. I'm saying the ones who accept Christ, who believe he gave his only begotten son. I'm not saying a word. Okay. But okay. He, but you know what? He still do for the sinners, though. No, he do still do for the sinners. But I'm not saying the world. The ones who come and confess in front of the church and say that he is God, that they only begotten son. He said, eventually, if the whole world confess that they believe he gave his only begotten son, if the whole world confess. Okay. But just to establish something, the world is going to believe in the in the only begotten son. They're gonna have no other choice because it's gonna it's gonna happen. All right. Okay. So what I'm gonna go into then is showing you what the so-called black man comes from, who they come from, right? Give me that Deuteronomy. How did the so-called black man get here to America? How did the so-called black man get here to America? I'm saying so far because that's not what the Bible calls them, oh, right? Okay. So how did they get here? Maybe like from slavery time? Got here in slavery, right? Because yeah, like they weren't indigenous to here, no, right? Well, like, didn't they get here from the, the um, boats and stuff? And okay, the, the transatlantic yeah. slave trade, right? Okay, the cor like this image right here, right? They packed them in like sardines on on cargo ships and brought them over here, right? Okay. Right? All right, let me show you that in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships so so here's the thing it says that it's God is gonna bring the Israelites again into Egypt with ships right I'm gonna show you what Egypt is synonymous with in the Bible give me that in Exodus Just establish that real quick. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Right, out of bondage, right? So it's Egypt is synonymous with bondage, right? With slavery. We get that in Revelations real quick. Book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in this in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt all right so this place that's spiritually Egypt right it's not going to be no longer the same Egypt it's going to be another Egypt right another slavery that they're going to go into right so finish that Deuteronomy. and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way where I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again because they weren't going to go into literal Egypt again right because God's told them that they're not gonna they're not gonna see the land of Egypt again once they left it. The first time with Moses, right? You're familiar with that story? Yes. Okay. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond. Sold unto who? Your enemies. Who, who was the so-called black man sold to? They were sold to the white people. That's right. That's right. right. For bond men and bond women for slaves. And no man shall buy you. Right. The word buy there doesn't mean literally just buy you. It means redeem you. Right? It means no one's going to save you from that. Just how Martin Luther King didn't save them. Just how Malcolm X didn't save them. Because why? Because it didn't come from the Bible. That's right. Right? They weren't saying, hey man, you know what? Give me that in Deuteronomy uh, 28 and 15. Because this is the this is the reason why so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans are in this position that we are in today. All right? But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, to do all his commandments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Malcolm X... Martin Luther King didn't tell you, hey man, we got to keep all these commandments, right? Martin Luther King wasn't telling people not to eat pork, not to eat shrimp, right? He wasn't telling them none of that. Um, and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, so if you're not doing what he's telling you to do, all these curses, and it goes from 15 to 68, telling you all these curses that were going to come upon Israel. Right, and I'm, I'll go into a couple of them just to show you that this is only affecting the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, not those people in Israel today. Actually, give me that in, Reve give me that in Revelations. Uh, 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 give me, uh, let me see 54. Yeah, give me 54. Verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate 
his eyes shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Alright, so it says... Uh, so, so, the, so that the man that is tender among you, and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Right, and that's what's going on right here, right? We have the so-called... Uh, we have gangs here, right? So it's we have people that come from the same people, right? Say, for example, Mexicans, right? There's Sureños, there's Norteños. The same people, but they're fighting over blocks that don't pertain to us, right? There's If you see another another Mexican with a different color that's not yours, you're going to kill that man, right? Same thing with, with so-called blacks. There's blood and crips, right? Even if, even goes as weaker than that, that it's just certain streets that you're into. It's no longer even just the whole gang and as uh, bloods and crips, it's just streets. There's there's an evil eye towards each other, right? You're not gonna see no Mexican man or no black man walk up to another black man and be like, hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing? You're gonna mug them, this and that. You're gonna wait for the wrong for them to say the wrong thing, and they're gonna shoot them. You're gonna you're gonna fight, right? There's no love between our people. There it is. Exactly. And it's even more stupid because this whole place is gonna get destroyed. That's right. Right. So here. Uh, verse forty, uh, verse fifty-four. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, towards his wife. This man's wife is gonna what? And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Right, this man's gonna have an evil eye towards his wife, and he's gonna leave his children. Who does that fit to? That I mean, white people aren't going through that. Asian men aren't going through that, right? Who's that? Who's that pertaining to? Right? It's the black Hispanic and Native Americans. This is our households right here that he's speaking about. And this is just to show you because. When, when people speak about Jews, right, most people think about those people in Israel today, right? So let me show you something about those people in Israel today, if they fit what the Bible is talking about. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9, and I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Right? God knows the true Israelites' poverty, right, their works, what they're going through. But thou art rich. How can you be poor but rich? Right? It's your spirit, right? You're, we're the best. We're um, we treat every other nation good, but we don't treat our people good, right? That's what that's what happened with the indigenous people, right? Here in America, they came, they conquered. Why? Because our people didn't fight with them. Our people didn't put up with with what they were doing. They just said, "Oh, yeah, man, we have love for you. Just we'll have faith. We'll have uh, trust in you." And what what did the white man do? They killed us. We treat our people worse. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right, so that's that's showing you how we're poor, but we're rich, right? Because we have this spirit, right? That's that's our what our people is known for, right? Our spirit. Yeah. Even though we're poor. Yeah. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy. Right. Right. The blasphemy. Right. The lie. The disgusting lie. What? I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Those people that say they're Jews. Who are those people that say they're they're they are Jews? Some Jews be Caucasians, don't they? Yeah, that's what it is. Jews be Caucasians, don't they? Right, the white people, right? Those those people in Israel today, right? I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews but are not, and are the synagogue of Satan. Because what did it? Because what did it say before that? Right, it says your poverty. Right, those people in Israel aren't poor. Right, Tel, Tel Aviv, I think it's all, is one of the six richest places on the whole world. Right, there's no poverty going on there. And it's well known that the Jews know, own everything. Right. They own the banks. You have to go through them to, to, uh, to get loans. Right? You, no. Okay, yeah, let's go. Yeah, give me, and this is why, right? The the thing that I showed you in Revelation, speaking about those people that say they're Jews, is because the real Jews, the real Israelites, weren't gonna know that anymore, right? More than sixteen or seventeen. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter seventeen, verse four. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Right, because the so-called black man didn't know this land before. They were forced over here. Right, right. Right. So this is a land that they didn't know. And they were one more time. 
and thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. You weren't going to know you were Israel anymore, right? You ask any so-called black man, they're not going to know that, right? Unless they've actually read this how it's supposed to be read, you know? Hold on a second. But I don't think they can around. Verse, uh, if I come my brother up, I know he got uh, And I will cause you to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest, knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Right, and that's why those there's people that are claiming to be Jews, but they're not. Right, because we forgot who we are. Why? Right? Because we're not following those commandments. We fell from our heritage, from the law. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right. Revelation chapter two verse ten. Fear none of those things which shall thou suffer. Behold, the devil shall come and cast some of you into prison. All right, so this verse right here says the devil is going to cast some of us into prison. Right? It's not literally a man with horns and pitchforks and a tail telling you that he's going to put you into prison. This is a person. Right? And who's put who's putting our people into prison houses? Right. First of all, themselves and being not not educated. What you find most people who are in prison are under arrest. Okay, I, I can agree with, with that for a part. Who who set that up though? Right. It's a setup. Mm -hmm. By who? Right. When they say the man, right? The government set that up, right? We didn't have prison houses before they, they invented that. Right? So read that verse one more time. Fair. Fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. To prison. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. All right, be faithful. That's all. That's what that's pretty much talking about. We're going to go through things, and we're going to cast it into prison. We're going to go through through suffering, but be faithful. That's what that verse is talking about. But I wanted to focus that it says the devil is going to cast you into prison. Right? I'm going to show you something real quick, though. Okay. Who's that man right there? That image. That's Jesus Christ? How did you get that? Yeah, yeah, without the horns, without the, without the tongue, without the 666 on it. Christ. How, where did you get that understanding from, though? Because this is what they always show me. The That's what they showed you. Christ. But I thought Christ was an African American. That's right. I thought I thought he was black. That's right. I thought God was black. Yeah, I got you. So I mean, but this is the picture they showed me when we was growing up in in a Bible that we studied and they handed out movies. Right, right. And who, and who and who brought that religion thing over here? The white man, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you what Jesus looked like according to the Bible because you're on do, point, please right? Do, please go ahead. Revelations chapter one. Revelations chapter one, verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants uh, things which must must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Fourteen, right? It says the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is. This is a God pretty much showing you what Jesus looks like. All right. So go ahead. Verse uh, verse 14. His head and his hairs actually start at verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? Clothed with a garment down to down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says his hairs were white like wool. Like this man's hair right here. You see that? It's white and it's woolly. You see that man's hair? It's white and woolly. This man's hair right here is not woolly at all. Right, right. I'll finish, I'll finish this one and I'm going to show you this first though. This is the book of, book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And who 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 owns the earth right now? Right? Who, who owns everything? Who's in power right now? Okay, let me read this verse one more one more time from the top again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's right. 
and he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. All right, so it says he covers the faces of the judges thereof. That's the biggest judge there was, Jesus Christ. It says he's covering the face of them. Right, that's not him right there. They're, they're changing to something else. Right, they're 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 um they're not showing you what who he actually is. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this one now. All right, first we saw this that he, this man in this image right here doesn't have white woolly hair. All right, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. Are, are your feet the same color as the rest of your body? Right. Okay. And it says that they like unto fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. What color would that be? If you get brass and you burn it in a furnace. Right in a furnace, brass, it would dark. Right, it would be a, it would be a so called black man. Right? <laughs> right. And that man right there is neither one of these. No, no, no. no. Right? And his voice has the sound of many waters. Or he had a great voice. Or he had a I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you why we have this image right here. Go to, um, go to Wisdom of Solomon 14. Because I'm gonna show you that the Bible speaks about this happening in our days, and it's showing you why we have this image. Okay. Okay. Uh, First Maccabees chapter three verse 48, and they laid open the book of the law, which the heathen sought to paint the li their likeness of the images right they they opened the book of the law right they opened the bible the heathen right at the time in the maccabees is speaking about the greeks there right and what are the greeks they're white okay. right so the greeks painted their image and that's who that is right all right and uh i'm gonna do you know where that image starts from where it came from okay okay but who who set that image though do you know do you know the history of that image no, I'm not sure, but like you said, the original God is with wool hair and brass. That's the yeah, that's the real up. that's the real real holy deal, holy deal feel. But this is something they want us to, to pretend that this is who really God looks like, but this is not the real one. Right. Point so, blank. So in Revelation, it speaks about uh, Christ, right? Yeah. And it says Christ was made in the image of the Father, right? And here in Daniel seven. I'm gonna show you what that what that looks like. Okay. Right, but okay. which one did I have you? Okay. Was it Psalm 14? Do you remember? Uh. Y'all No, hold on, hold on. Yo, 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 yeah, y'all talking to me. I like y'all. Y'all all right. Y'all all right. I don't do drugs and drinks. I'm just happy to feel with the Holy Ghost. I think it's one of these. Fourth is the third door. Who is 14? Okay, start at 15 right now, alright? Uh, Book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. And behold, to the throne. Uh, Till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit. Who's the ancient of days? That's God, right? He's been ancient of days, right? Okay. Okay. But I don't know it all. And the and the ancient of days did sit. And whose garment was white as as snow, and his hair and his head were like pure wool, and his throne was like fire of flame, and his wheels are as burning fire. Daniel. Here, 7 to 10, I think. That's what I thought it was. Behold, uh, start off. And, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head were like pure wool. Right. Even in this verse, it says that his hair was like pure wool. Right? And just how we said that man right there doesn't have wool. Who has woolly hair on the earth? But, okay, what people have woolly hair? Mostly, um, us black people, us, as we had, you know, when we had dreads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, 
African Americans do. Yeah, okay. Do. Okay. That's, 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 that's just showing you that what people had that, right? And it's not, it's not white people do not come woolly here. All right. Let me show you this in the uh, Wisdom of Solomon, because this man right here is the son of Caesar Borgia. I mean, right. this is Caesar Borgia, the son of Alexander the Sixth, right? A pope, right? And he painted this. Uh, oh yeah, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, so uh, so that's where this image started at, okay. and I'm going to show you that image in the Bible, uh, spoken of by Solomon, right? Thousands of years before that even happened, right? So give me that. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, fourteen and fifteen. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he have made an image of his child soon taken away, now honor of him, now honor him as a god, which which as a god, which was then a dead man. And delivered to those that were that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Verse sixteen. Right, so this image came from this this father that was mourning for his son, right? And he painted this image that they treated as God. Right. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom, grown grown strong, was kept as a law, and and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong, grown strong was kept as a law. And un and graven images because it's okay. Keep and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. What's one of the Ten Commandments, right? Don't have no idols. Don't have no images. No graven images, right? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And they came and they stole and, and killed our people. Right. So let me get this. Exodus chapter twenty, verse four. Thou shalt not make unto any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, nor on the earth beneath. Right. So why it says an ungodly custom right there, right? Because this man made this image that was portrayed. It said to the whole world. The whole world was following after this, right? Who's who? Who men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far. It made an express image of a king whom they honored, to the to the end that by to the end that by their forwardness they might flatter him that was absent, as if he were present. Right. So it's just showing that this image, right, was portrayed to everywhere. Everybody was worshiping this false god, right? And who's that image? Who who who? What image was that? It was it was the one that that the that Caucasians, right, that the Spaniards brought over here to our people and said, man, if you don't follow this god. Why, and another point, why are they showing this man? Because they want to show themselves as God. That's right? Show right. themselves. If they show you what, what God actually looked like. Yeah, because like I said, they, they, they're trying to make us think we're supposed to be superior to the, the, what they look like. Because we are superior to them. Another right. point, man, you, you get a so-called white person, you sit him in the sun, what's going to happen with him? They're going to turn red, they're going to... Oh, exactly. They're, even the sun is against them. Nature itself is against the so-called white man. Right. Right. In, in Israel, there's also one of the highest places that has skin cancer. Why? Because those people don't even belong there. Well, that's right. That's why you're supposed to use sunscreen. So you don't use sunscreen. I put that on my face. I got some on my Yeah. And uh, give me like, Ezekiel 36 and 5. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to just show you, a, like how I said, those people in Israel, they don't pretty much... Still, Nature is against them, right? God is against them over there. They're uh, like how you said we're superior, or like how I said we're superior to them, right? Even our body is made better than theirs, right? Our body can stand stand the sun, right? But they, you don't see white people out there in the fields picking anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm gonna show you that they don't they don't belong there and wh why they're even there. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 5 Therefore thus saith the Lord God Surely in the fire of my jealousy Have I spoken against the residue of the heathen Right, the heathen, the non-Israel And against all Idumia It says the worst of the heathen though Right? And against who? All Idumia Which which have appointed my land into their possession Who's the, who's the people that are in Israel today? In Israel today? It should be the, the Israelites Right, but it but it says that the worst of the heathen is going to be there. It says Idumia is going to be there. That's the Greek word for the word e for Edom, right? The Edomites, the descendants of Edom, right? So it's showing you, um, which have appointed, 
Oh, suck it. Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. So if this verse is saying that the people in Israel today are, are that the worst of the heathen appointed the God's land into their possession, how are we going to say that those people in Israel today are Israelites when it says the worst of the heathen are going to be living there? Right. Right, just how, just how, okay, exactly, just how I showed you in Revelations, that it says that those people that are calling themselves Jews but are not, but are synagogue of Satan, it's the same thing, it goes back to the same thing, those people in Israel today, it says the worst of the heathen are going to be there, right, those so-called white people are the worst of the heathen, black, right, they're not the color of your dress, right, they're, it's a, it's a brown, right, it's a, just how the brother behind you, just how we all, we all descend from those same people, right, we're, just how it said in the scripture, we're a speckled bird, right, go ahead, man. Here, let me show you. Let me show you what our people were getting being called in the Bible. All right, read it out. Book of Acts, chapter thirteen, verse one. In the church of Antioch, there were some prophets right. and some teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, called the Black. They called these people just the Black, right? In another translation, it says the Black man. They called them the Black men, right? These people were Black. They were they were dark skinned people. They weren't white people by any means. Right? The Bible doesn't speak about any of that, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah, exactly. They did it on purpose. They whitewashed the prophets. Why? Because to show you that, try to show themselves higher than us. If they showed you who, if they showed the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans who they really are, man, these white people wouldn't. None of this that's going on with them right now would be happening. Right? right? They would not be in power at all. Right. And that's the and that's the problem. Give me Deuteronomy twenty-eight and one. And that's the main problem, man, because we don't know who we are. That's just how you explain that we we lost our traditions. We lost who we were. We're, we're you ask anybody who any black, Hispanic, and Native American who they come from in the Bible, they're not going to know a damn thing. They don't even look at this book. No, they don't. What's going? On? You got a question on that image right there? Here, go ahead. Deuteronomy twenty-eight, verse one. So, sorry, it's a lot. because I showed you in verse 15 of Deuteronomy 20 that all these curses were going to come upon our people if we don't do the commandments. All right, let me see how we fix this up. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, if you do all these commandments. Now just listen, it says, and to, and, that I command, uh, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to observe just to, to know it, but then what again? And to do all his commandments, yeah. his word. Live it. Live which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Yeah, there you go. And, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So from verse 1 to 14 is all these blessings blessings that we're going to come on, upon our people. Right? Not curses, blessings. And why are we in this predicament, man? Look at our brothers right here, man. Selling dope to each other. That's all they do all day. Why? Because we're cursed. We're cursed right now. We're not doing the commandments. Right? Yeah, of course. That's all. Everything comes from God. Our praises. Our praises. Thank you. That's what we're here to do. Thank you so much. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the conclusion of the whole thing here. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The whole duty of man isn't to make money. The whole duty of man isn't to sell rocks, to sell wheat to everybody. It's to do the commandments, how it says here. Exactly. Right? And, uh, yeah, I mean, you got any questions on anything? No. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, I want to say Shalom.